Today we are taking a glimpse inside the soul of this Canyon Ultima CFSLX. Just a few more. <laughs> Quite a lot. I had countless comments on my previous video saying you need to compare the Trifox X10 to a Western frame. Well, today your wishes have been answered. Rob has kindly donated this Canyon Ultima CF SLX, which is from 2018. So thank you very much, Rob, because quite frankly, even broken, cracked carbon frames from Western brands go for a lot of money second hand. And until each video gets 100k views or someone fancy sponsoring the channel, I'm having to dig deep into the old pockets. Now this frame is light, really light. So I'm intrigued to see how they have made it this light. The frame set, which you can see here, weighed 1.8 kilograms, which I believe includes a frame, the forks, the bars, and the seat post back in 2018. Just to be clear, I'm not talking about any particular brand. We are doing a comparison yeah. to see how far the clone bikes are compared to uh, a recognized good brand. Yep. Right. I feel the weight super of this light. is a super, super light climbing bike. Very nice bike. Uh, it's had a massive top tube fracture repair done to it. I want to see whether there is a consideration for the way the material is built up and have a look at the scope and look for the jam in the sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jam in the sandwich. Now to give some context, carbon fiber frames are made up of layers of carbon fiber and epoxy or resin which is compressed together with high compression and heat ideally there will be no pockets of epoxy the resin and it will appear like one complete solid structure it's very important that as you hear the cut through the the, the, the repair considering this is all new material yeah that the sounds should be similar 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 tone yeah. in the cutting because if it was a duller sound would be there's more uh, a matrix epoxy and not so much carbon mm. this yeah. is on the manufacturer side this is not the repair side so same wall thickness all the way around all the way around you can see how it's tapered it's tapered, yeah. it's tapered. Cool they need see. more structural strength in this area yeah. and you see that the, the level of detail yeah, in right. terms of its work is just brilliant yeah. the way they've considered weight loss in this area and also flexibility in the frame in yeah. that range and you can see this is the original carbon down here it's so it's not as if we've got thinner in our repair of the yeah. wall thickness but we'll also you can also see so nice and tight that yeah. uh, there's no jam in that sandwich. Nice so I'm pleased, no, no. having taken a risk and yeah, cut yeah. my own repairs up. So the Trifox basically was about that thickness. Yeah. And we cut, if you remember, we cut the middle out. So what we are seeing here is varying carbon thickness along the top tube, which is a technique used to save weight. So the carbon is thicker around the seat tube and towards the head tube areas and in the middle it's thinner because there is less strength required. This also shows us why we shouldn't really be clamping our top tubes with our bike stands. Now a big shout out to Rob for showing one of his repairs. I believe this was a bike used to train people on repairs previously, but it is still equally as impressive. Now when you look at this top tube section in comparison to the Trifox, we can see that the wall thickness is similar on the Canyon towards the seat tube section, but it is thinner towards the center of the top tube. As Rob suggested previously, it seems like Trifox had just thrown a lot of carbon at their frame to ensure its strength. Canyon on the other hand, have reduced the amount of carbon where they can because this specific frame is designed to be super lightweight. So easy. Why? Because carbon doesn't do abrasion very well. Okay. Whereas metal does. What happens with metal, the crystalline molecular structure of metal rolls over itself. It's flowing. Yeah. Whereas a, a composite or a carbon thread yeah. is, doesn't go anywhere. It's abrasion. Yeah, it's like, like sticking your head out of a manhole cover. It's off. Let's see if we've got any layout characteristics in here. I doubt. No, I think it's, it's quite thin actually. I mean, the, pur the purpose of this is just to stop the cyclist from falling back. Yeah. That's why it's called a seat stay. Yeah. Stay, don't move. Yeah, there's nothing else to really say about that. Yeah. Why I cut the top tube off more than anything else is that 
the top tube is only there to stop the bicycle from collapsing the, the bottom bracket onto the floor. Okay. So it's a stopper. So the, the function okay, of the top tube me. is actually not a, as a, as a yeah, it's I'm not a structural like, like you'd have in these areas here. Yeah. When you're trying to get a performance bike made, you don't do what Trifox did, which is just put carbon in. That tells me the level of thought that's gone into what that function of that tube is. If you ask me what was the best bike to ride, the best bike to ride is the bike with the biggest R&D development department. Guys who are doing the most testing yeah. are going to do the best layups, going to produce the best bicycles for the purpose. Yeah. So it's not about materials anymore, like horsehair. And yeah. It's more about why they put so much carbon in the top tube, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. But I could say by the, cutting this up that these guys know what they're doing. So that's the initial inspection complete with the same sections cut as the Trifox. Admittedly, before I came to see Rob and learn more about carbon fiber, I had assumed that more is better and stronger. <laughs> bigger the better but i can now see how changing the layup and the thickness can affect the weight and the characteristics of a frame so less is sometimes more now let's have a look under the microscope at the sections we have cut out and see how good or bad the carbon layup is canyon top tube yeah a few more streaks <laughs> just a few more <laughs> quite a lot that's surprising there's quite a lot of epoxy in there for such a light frame yeah. It seems unusual to see that. What's happening here is I don't think there's been an awful amount of, I could be wrong again, but I'm just speaking from my experience, is that when it's compressed really well, yeah. you shouldn't see black annual rings at all. They should be compressed into each other, into one ways here. It might be the case that they <clears throat> wanted a little bit of uh, flexibility yeah. in this part of the tube because uh, Canyon use uh, quite a dry carbon, very dry they make them really light because uh -huh, this yeah. looks almost engineered the way it's yeah, running yeah i see what you mean so yeah. i don't want to assume that i know that this is a fault or anything it might be part of their idea of what they think yeah the bike needs to be so that might be a good thing i yeah. don't know because it seems very consistent all the way around okay so let's take a second to compare the layering of the canyon to the trifox so on the canyon as rob said the epoxy white lines seem to be pretty consistent. If we look at the Trifox, we can see that the white lines are more sporadic. That was the main difference to my eye. Overall though, there were still some epoxy lines in the top tube of the Canyon. I was starting to think that most of these frames or all frames have some sort of epoxy line showing, but without spoiling a future video, one of the other frames that we cut up on the day had no epoxy showing at all. That video will be coming very soon and we'll compare that to the canyon and the trifox now let's look at the seat stay on the canyon on the under the same mold pressure there are no there's no jam in the sandwich yeah only the white ring on the outside which is a primer which tells you that it's it's some quite likely that they're putting something in between the layers the technique, yeah some sort of technique i've got a feeling it's uh, uh give some 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 sh some shock absorption yeah. in the frame. And these are very functional parts of the bike, so they should really be the same. Yeah. Again, you'll see thick parts and thin parts. Again, they're the, they're the wrinkles on the inside, but ideally very similar. There's your uniweave carbon. We didn't actually look at the Trifox seat stays under the microscope, but I do have them side by side here. Firstly, you can see just how much bigger the Trifox is. Then you can see that the carbon is also thicker. So all round, the Trifox is more chunky. And this is pretty much the same for all areas of the Trifox really. Now, admittedly, the Trifox is a sprint bike and the Canyon is a climbing bike, but you can see just how drastic carbon thickness can vary from frame to frame. Despite cutting these frames up to help us all see what on earth is going on in the world of carbon fiber, it really doesn't feel that great, to be honest. The only saving grace is that this frame was taken from the graveyard and was already a write-off. It's also not that easy to cut through despite the powerful angle grinder, but when you get to areas like the head tube and the bottom bracket, for example, you can really feel the strength and the difference in the carbon fiber when you are cutting, especially when you compare that to the main tubes, which are considerably thinner at times. The tight corners are also hard to get to at times and they have to be finished off with a hacksaw, which is no fun on a floppy frame. Basically, you just go health lever and try and get this once majestic frame split into two.
I normally have to cut a large section off around the bottom bracket in order to get the hacksaw in there and finish it off and make that final cut. And there we have it friends, the frame is in two sections. What have you done? Now even though this frame is cut in half, it is still really stiff when you compare it to the Trifox. It's hard to capture it on camera, but there is definitely more strength still in the Canyon. I don't know if this is because certain sections are stiffer on the Canyon, but I wanted to mention it as it's the first thing that I observed. The top tube is looking pretty consistent inside with nothing that stands out to me. As we found out earlier, we can see that the Trifox has thicker carbon on the top tube. We can also see the insert for the cables because this Canyon is a semi-rooted rim brake bike. That leads us nicely onto the head tube. Now, around the top bearing race, I'd say that the carbon is around the same thickness and maybe a little thicker on the Trifox to be honest. When we go down to the bottom bearing, it's a different story. The carbon at the front of the race is much thicker on the Canyon. I'd say that it's around three times as thick as the Trifox. I'm not sure why this is, but it's a clear difference when looking at the internals of both frames. On the down tube of the Canyon, we can see that there is also some tapering with the carbon being thicker towards the headset and the bottom bracket. As for the main part of the tube, there is less wrinkling on the Canyon when compared to the Trifox. Again, I'm not sure if that makes a difference, but it's nice to see it nice and neat in the Canyon. Now around the bottom bracket, the Trifox has more carbon for sure, similar to other areas of the bike running theme here, peeps. There is also far more wrinkling. Again, not sure if that has an impact, but the Canyon looks much neater. The section above the bottom bracket is noticeably thicker on the Canyon when compared to other walls on the Canyon frame. It looks to me like that was a conscious choice to make that section thicker and stronger. There's a similar story on the seat tube. The Trifox has thicker carbon, especially around the top where the seat post is clamped. The Canyon did have a rubber insert for the seat post, so slightly different design there. You can also see on the Canyon where the rim brake mount is. The carbon is much thicker there as you would expect. But what did Rob think? When I sent everything over to Rob to review, he was impressed with how the Canyon looked overall and said that in general, it looked pretty tidy. He also said that, the one thing about Canyon which seems to be different is the type of carbon they use. Basically, the matrix is minimal. If like me, the words the matrix is minimal made no sense in your brain, the matrix is everywhere. I asked Rob to explain in a little more detail. And he said, minimal matrix means dry carbon structure. Dry as in the epoxy matrix is very minimal due to less resin in the ratio or high compression or both. But when it is dry like that, you can imagine that if you impact it, it will. One, delaminate easier. Two, puncture easier because the wall thickness is simply much thinner. The point is dry carbon means stiffer, but more fragile. The Trifox is essentially on the opposite end to that, which makes total sense when you handle these frames and look inside. If you want to see me cut up the cheap Chinese carbon Trifox X10 that I'm using as a comparison, then click here. We found something pretty shocking in the fork, which wasn't ideal at all.